People who work in retail, what is your most ridiculous story when it comes to dealing with customers? This happened during my shift on New Year's Eve. It was already quite crowded, and to make matters worse, I was on the express lane. For the first 20 minutes of my shift, I was going through the motions as per usual, and that day I was in a relatively good mood, so I was extra friendly to customers. However, this all changed when people started screaming in the pharmacy for medics, and when I looked over, I saw an older gentleman who was the manager of the bakery department. He had collapsed and people were surrounding him, taking turns doing CPR. It was shocking, horrifying, and scary. It was one of those things where you knew what you were seeing, but you couldn't quite process it or look away. So while that was happening and police, paramedics, and firefighters were going in to deal with the situation, I continued checking people out and trying to keep my composure in an obviously extremely stressful and scary situation. However, I was notified that after an hour he had passed away. I was shocked, mortified, and felt so sick to my stomach to the point where I could throw up right there because, mind you, I've experienced losing people, but I've never watched somebody die right there in front of me. This is where the customers come into the picture. As I was attempting to process that I had just watched a man die, my lane began to get extremely swamped, which stressed me out, and I wasn't in the mood to really be there. I get an older woman who has a gift card to scan, and when I type in the code for the gift card, it processes it as a complete cash order. The woman begins to get snappy angry and asks me to fix it but I genuinely couldn't do so because I don't have the authority to. I tell her this. She gets angrier and the man behind her who is also older steps in, continuing to berate me and telling me about how I should lose my job because I'm unprofessional and don't know what I'm doing. They get the cash manager and continue to complain. The cash manager ends up solving the issue, confirming that it's a technical error, talks to the woman about what had just happened and the woman feels ashamed of herself. She then proceeded to apologize to me and gave me a pat on the back before wishing me a good night and leaving. This reminds me of an experience I had working at the casino. I worked in the cash cage and on this night, I was at the last window which happened to be right next to the ATM. We were really busy because it was a weekend night so I'm chugging along cashing chips and checks when suddenly I hear a loud bang. I look over and an elderly man using the ATM has collapsed on the floor. Due to having on staff security and EMT, there was someone there quickly and before I knew it, they were performing CPR on this man. Because he had fallen into my line, I stepped away from the counter and was just standing there observing this horrific scene since I couldn't do anything else. Of course, this caused the other six lines at the cage to get longer. Wouldn't you know it, after a few minutes, some lady comes up and literally steps over this guy's feet as they're doing CPR and starts waving her slot ticket around asking if I can cash her out. I had never been so disgusted with someone in my life. Unfortunately, this was early in my casino career and I learned pretty soon that behavior like that was to be expected from our patrons. It's understandable to feel overwhelmed and sick after such an experience, but at least the gift card lady eventually apologized. But it still must have been a stressful situation overall. That image is something I'm sure you'll never forget, sadly. And for the other customer at the casino, those types of people are the reason why so many people have lost all hope for humanity as a whole. Absolutely disgusting. This happened Saturday afternoon, the busiest day of the week. After taking my 30-minute lunch break, I came back inside the building, went to the back room to drop off my bag, and then back to the register to clock back in and resume my shift. I'm not wearing a name tag or a walkie-talkie, and our store's uniform is a red, blue, or green t-shirt and dark jeans. So, while I am wearing the uniform, I wouldn't say it's easily identifiable. However, I must still be official looking, because on my way back to the register, a woman asked if I worked there. And being honest, I told her yes. However, I wasn't on the clock yet and I could help her with whatever she needed as soon as I clocked in. She muttered something under her breath, but did follow me up to the register, where two of my co-workers were standing there who were actually on the clock. The register was being used, so it took me a second longer before I was able to clock in. Meanwhile, the woman spoke to my other co-worker who happened to be one of the managers and just wanted to let her know how I refused to answer her question until I was on the clock. I love that customers now expect me to do my job, customer service, helping them find things in the store or answer any of their questions, for free. Especially since there were at least four other employees in the store who were all on the clock and available to help her. Maybe you like to do your work without being compensated for it, but I'm not going to lead you around the store without getting paid for it first. 
Wow, some customers really have unrealistic expectations. It's not like you were slacking off during your break. You were just following company policy. It's not fair for customers to expect you to work for free. Hopefully, the lady realized her mistake and didn't cause too much trouble. The level of entitlement some people possess will always baffle me no matter how many times I see it. So I used to work at a very big, very high-profile retail store. I have a few good stories from my two years there, but this is the biggest one I love to share. I was a cashier and most often was supervising the self-checkout. My town isn't huge, so most of the customers would at least recognize me. If you worked a certain amount of time, you were required to take an hour lunch break. When we had our lunch break, we fully clocked out and had no access to anything in the system. We were also told that we were expressly not allowed to do any work tasks or help any customers while on our break. If we did, the store could get in huge trouble, and we ourselves could even get fired. I did different things on my break. But this particular day, I had decided to buy a few things for lunch in the store, and then head home to hang out with my mom while I ate, since I lived really close. I happily procured my miscellaneous goodies, including a treat for my mom, and happily stood in the line at the self-check, waiting for a register. I had my work vest with me, but it was off and slung over my shoulder. When I was next in line and a register opened, this lady shoved past me, literally knocking a precious pack of beef jerky out of my hands and beelined over to the open register. I was annoyed, but I didn't want to waste my lunch break and she wasn't worth a confrontation, so I just quietly picked up my jerky and made my way over to another register, which had opened up literally about 10 seconds later. I was just happily and quietly scanning my goodies when I heard snapping and a loud, Hey! I turn around and find the same woman glaring at me. I blink at her, bewildered, before she says, Hey, I need help over here. I scanned this twice. I need you to take it off. I looked over and saw that my co-worker, who was actually in charge of the self-check, was helping someone else. I look back at Karen and smile and politely say, Oh, sorry. I'm on lunch break right now, so I can't help you, but my co-worker should be free to help in just a second. Karen did not like that. She glared at me before asking, Why can't you help me? You're right here. I blinked at her and explained that I wasn't clocked in because I was on my lunch break. I could get in trouble for helping her and I couldn't really even if I wanted to because my ID wouldn't work in the system while I was clocked out. Karen stomps her foot and insists, That's freaking stupid. You work here. If you're in the building, you're working. You have to come help me. At this point, my coworker was done and had walked over to help, but Karen wasn't having it. No! I asked them to help. They should do their freaking job. They're just being lazy. I just started ignoring the lady and went back to checking out while my coworker tried to explain to her that I wasn't on the clock and couldn't help. But she's not having it. This adult woman throws the stuff she was buying on the ground, leaving her cart and everything there, and marches over to the customer service desk where my manager was standing. Karen then brings my manager over to the self-check and loudly exclaims, Your employee was refusing to help me and being extremely rude. At this point, I finished checking out and was standing by the self-check exit. My manager just looks at me and says, Are you on the clock? I tell her nope, and that I'm just trying to get my lunch and go home. So the third person sternly explains to this woman that I'm not on the clock and I'm not allowed to or able to help her. Instead of going back and getting help from my coworker, she storms out screaming about how she's never going to shop there again. Okay, cool, I won't miss you. It didn't even stop there. As I was talking to my manager and a few coworkers and explaining what happened, Karen's husband comes in. He goes to Karen's register, finishes checking out and pays, then comes over to us. He then tells me that his wife is in the car sobbing and in severe emotional distress because of how I treated her and embarrassed her and that, I hope you're really proud of yourself. I just grinned at him and gave him a thumbs up. As he's walking out, my manager tells me I should feel free to take an extra 30 if I wanted. I then happily skipped home to enjoy my jerky in peace. Believe it or not, Karen, retail workers do in fact have basic human needs and rights. Exactly. Retail workers have basic human needs and rights too. Like taking a lunch break without being bothered by entitled customers like Karen. It's not rocket science, people. When I worked at a hardware store, I occasionally had to be a lookout for workers who had to grab pallets of products with a lift. Of course, when we do that, we would need to close two aisles. One being where the product is, the other being the adjacent one where, in the event of something being pushed or pulled by accident when grabbing an overhead product, no one gets hurt or injured from something falling. Obviously, we don't want customers passing or opening the gates because we want customers to be safe. Unfortunately, some idiots didn't think that that rule applied to them. 
A co-worker in a forklift and I were in the tile aisle helping an older couple, sweet people, get some tile, and it turned out the remaining tile they needed was on the overhead. So as my co-worker got the lift in position, I went to close the other aisle to the right, our carpeting, and I see a group of six people looking at rollaway carpet. Naturally, we can't close an aisle when there are people still shopping, so I asked if they needed help and let them know we were going to be closing the aisle soon. They proceed to stay in that aisle for 10 minutes just looking at the rolled carpet, which, mind you, we only had five different kinds with varying colors and cuts on display so there wasn't much to choose from, and talking about God knows what. The older lady needing the tile realized they were holding up the aisle and was waiting at the other end of the aisle looking at them with her arms crossed. Even though she was wearing shades, I could tell she was staring daggers at them. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, The group leaves and I rush to get both gates closed and latched to the shelves. My co-worker was bringing the pallet of tile down as I was watching the gates on the carpeting side. As I was looking at other aisles to see if anyone was coming, I turned to see two guys from the group before on the other side unlatch the gate opposite of me, open it, and proceed to walk in the middle of the aisle. I quickly called for the forklift to stop and I called out to the guys. Hey, this aisle is blocked off right now. We're getting a pallet down that could push something over here. One of the Einsteins looked at me and said, We're just getting some tape. Tape? You guys risked having a heavy pallet avalanche turn you guys to human pancakes for freaking tape? You couldn't just wait two minutes, Max? I stood there dumbfounded at how impatient and stupid they were. By the time I got out of it, they had left and closed the gate back. I told my co-worker and my floor manager what happened, and they were just as baffled as I was. Moral of the story, don't go through gates that are clearly labeled as hazardous or do not pass. Odds are there is a good reason you're being kept on the opposite side. Seriously, people, just follow the rules and don't be like these entitled brats. I swear some people are just clueless or are literally just so self-absorbed with their own lives that nothing else matters to them but themselves. This happened about a year ago. I was 18 and so was my girlfriend who worked at the same store as I did. Our store manager was a small middle-aged lady who overall wasn't a bad manager, but she had one big problem. She was terrible at dealing with shoplifters. I don't know what the laws are in other countries and states, but where this took place, workers were not allowed to touch shoplifters or else they could sue our company. According to store policy, for safety reasons, we were not allowed to block or stand in the way of shoplifters. Our store manager regularly yelled at, confronted, harassed, and blocked shoplifters. She had gotten in trouble for it before, but she was good at her job, and we had no replacements. Now to the story. One morning, it was me, my girlfriend, and the store manager all working in the store. My girlfriend was working the front register. Managers are supposed to stay at the front, and I was in the back helping people if they needed something from our back room. At some point, I come out of the back room and find my manager arguing with some woman. They were carrying a large bag, which appeared to be empty. This person was a regular shoplifter in the plaza where my store was located. So my manager followed her all the way to the back of the store. The shoplifter was telling my manager to stop following her and my manager was saying, I'm just here in case you need anything. My manager was constantly about 5 to 10 feet away from her, just cleaning up shelves. This was nothing new, so I didn't think much of it. The shoplifter asked for some items from the back which I brought out to her because she hasn't done anything wrong yet and I didn't know she was a regular shoplifter. I was still being nice and cordial with her because that's just how I work. Afterwards, I convinced her to let me bring the items she asked for to the front for her. We do this to prevent shoplifting by placing the items behind the counter of the register and not bringing it back up until they pay for it. When I get to the front, I begin helping my girlfriend cut the line down and get on the other register. As my manager and the shoplifter approach the front, they're getting more and more aggressive with each other. The shoplifter had begun grabbing items off of the shelves and stuffing them into her bag, saying, Now I'll give you a reason to follow me. My manager is now berating her and slapping items out of her hands onto the floor. The shoplifter is now trying to leave out the front door, and my manager is blocking the door two feet in front of the shoplifter. My manager tells me to call the cops, and so I do. This whole time... I am trying to ignore what is happening and help other people at checkout, and my girlfriend is doing the same. At the same time as I am trying to ring people up for their items, I am on the phone with the cops, telling them the situation and the description of the shoplifter. At some point, I looked over and the shoplifter had pulled a gun out of her bag and was now pointing it at my manager's head. 
As I relayed this new, more terrifying situation to the operator, my manager continued to stand her ground and mocked her gun, saying the gun wasn't real and that she was doing a poor job of threatening her. The operator was asking about descriptions of the gun. It was a small pistol with a sight accessory on the top. The shoplifter then pointed the gun to the floor behind her and shot it, causing everyone to suddenly crouch down. I continued relaying this information to the operator. It was pretty loud, but not as loud as normal firearms, and there was little to no flash. So when she brought the gun back to point it at my manager's head, she still didn't believe it was real and was still berating her and blocked her from leaving the store. A few seconds later, the shoplifter pushed past my manager and began running down the sidewalk. My manager followed her outside and continued to yell at her as she ran away. I explained to the operator the direction she ran and they said they would be there soon. At this point, I would like to mention that my manager owns many firearms and regularly takes them to firing ranges. My manager walked back inside complaining about how the cops were still not here yet. She then said, People who do that are so funny. Like, don't you think I can tell it's not real? To which I pointed at the bullet casing lying on the ground. She picked it up and said, huh, and set it on the counter and walked to the office to pull up a security camera of all this being caught on tape. After dealing with the cops and helping them, they found the shoplifter and just like that, we reopened two hours later and my girlfriend and I worked the rest of our shifts like nothing happened, except for the entire front of the store being covered in and smelling like gunpowder dust. Yeah, I don't care if I think a gun is fake or not. I'm not going to rely on a hunch in a situation like that. That manager is extremely lucky that the shoplifter was not mentally prepared to shoot somebody that day. Thanks for watching till the end and don't forget to subscribe and like for more of these ridiculous stories. Love you all and stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.